This video would go over the history and evolution of JavaScript. Having some understanding about how the language came to be is fairly important because it allows us to understand why many of the features of the language that are currently available are there and how they came about. This video is part of a series of online tutorials available on our channel. Please subscribe if you would like to see more content like this. Even though the story of JavaScript begins in 1995, we should really start the story five years earlier, when at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, a fellow called Tim Berners-Lee devised the technologies behind the World Wide Web. In 1993, the web became an open standard, and a number of browsers quickly came about, the most prominent of which was the Mosaic web browser. The Mosaic web browser was devised by Mark Andreessen and Eric Bina. This is the same Mark Andreessen that a year later would form a company called Netscape that you may have heard of, and is currently one of the most prominent venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. The Mozilla web browser is really the browser that popularized the internet. It was really the first internet browser that could show images on a page in line with text rather than showing them in a separate window. In 1994, Netscape Communications Corp. gets incorporated, and also in the same year, the first version of their browser, Netscape Navigator, becomes available. Netscape Navigator is another major improvement over the existing technology. What the browser allows is the display of text and pages while a page is loading, which is a big change from what was available previously, where a page had to be fully loaded before it can be shown. And remember, at the time, internet speeds were quite slow. Notice how quickly things are moving. In four or five short years, we have gone from the creation of the concepts behind the World Wide Web to having venture-backed companies which are creating browsers and having wide adoptions. The world has discovered the internet. Just think about the following. Netscape gets formed in the early part of 1994, and in mid-1995, only a year later, it has an IPO which shook the world. All of a sudden, the company is valued at over $2 billion. This is the first company in history to do that so quickly. And this is in fact what started the internet boom of the late 90s. 1995 is also the year when Microsoft discovered the internet. Bill Gates has a famous internal memo called the Internet Tidal Wave, in which he basically says that the internet is the future of the company and they should devote full resources to it. The first version of Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer 1, becomes available this year. This is the beginning of what is known as the Browser Wars, when Microsoft and Netscape battle things out in terms of browser domination. Microsoft is packaging their Internet Explorer browser free of charge with their Windows 95 product. It was in fact these practices that led to a major antitrust case against Microsoft, which it lost where it was declared a monopoly. The reason why I'm telling you all of this is because this is the background against which JavaScript came to be. The first version of JavaScript was famously designed in only 10 days at Netscape by Brandon Icke, soon after their IPO. It was first incorporated in Netscape Navigator 2, and what it allowed was to add a dynamic element to the browser. You can think of browsers before JavaScript as simply document viewers. You send a request to the server, you get back an HTML page, you display it. Why is JavaScript called JavaScript? Well, as with the rest of the story, nothing is simple. The first working name for JavaScript inside Netscape was Mocha. A second name was then LiveScript. All of this was happening while a deal was brewing between Netscape and Sun Microsystem, who at the same time was heavily advertising and about to release a new language called Java. The idea was that Java would be the main language of the web for developing sophisticated applications, and then JavaScript would be a glue language for non-programmers. Many design decisions of early JavaScript had a lot to do with keeping the language as simple as possible. This is why JavaScript is called JavaScript. The initial plan was for it to be a companion language to Java, which would be a lot easier to learn. This is also why the syntax of JavaScript is very similar to the one of Java and to other C family languages. 
You should be aware that many of the similarities between JavaScript and Java are only superficial. And in fact, on the inside, the object model that JavaScript uses is quite different. And so is the inheritance model that it uses. So Netscape now has a language which it can integrate with a browser and make web pages dynamic. The language is called JavaScript. Microsoft quickly responds. It reverse engineers the JavaScript language, incorporates it in its engine, and it calls it JScript. JScript is added to Internet Explorer 3 in August of 96. Again, things are quite quickly moving. There is a new problem that needs to be resolved now. We have two browsers, all of which have a very similar but not identical implementation of a dynamic language, while we have users who want web pages displayed correctly on all browsers. This is how the next phase of JavaScript development came to be, standardization. It would be very convenient if there is an external body that makes decisions about the JavaScript language, which then browsers would simply implement. The standardization organization picked was the European Computer Manufacturers Association, ECMA, today known as ECMA International. Future development of JavaScript would now be made by a committee, with the initial members of the committee including Netscape, Microsoft, Sun Microsystems and a few other companies. The first organizing meeting took place in November of 1996. The first draft of a standard was soon afterwards prepared, which was accepted by the ECMA General Assembly in June of 97. What would the new language specification be called? It turns out that the name JavaScript was trademarked by Sun Microsystems and they were not willing to give it up, so a temporary name was picked. The language specification was called ECMAScript. Well, guess what? It is called ECMAScript to this day. It is a horrible name, but it's here to stay. So JavaScript has many names. Most people in the community call it JavaScript. But typically when we are referring to something that has to do with the specification, we would use the name ECMAScript, or an abbreviated version of it called ES. So in September of 1997, the first version of ECMAScript was published with official name of ECMA standard ECMA 262. The following year saw the second edition of the standard, which largely addressed some issues with the first edition, with most of the important changes to the language happening in the third edition. It would in fact be the third edition of the standard that would be the de facto standard of JavaScript for over a decade. The third edition of the standard incorporated the major additions to both the Netscape and the Internet Explorer browsers up until that point, in addition to a few other changes. Quite a few things were added at this stage that many users of JavaScript would recognize. We're talking about things such as the switch statement, do statement, object and array literals, the strict equality operator, quite a few array methods such as push, pop, shift, concat and slice, as well as exception handling, among many, many others. A chapter was closed with ECMAScript 3 and the committee was ready to open a new chapter where JavaScript can become a much more powerful language. Unfortunately, things did not quite go as planned. At this stage, the browser war between Microsoft and Netscape was pretty much over with Microsoft being declared the clear winner. This resulted in both companies somewhat losing interest in rapid innovation of their browser products. Netscape was acquired by AOL, which ultimately led to the discontinuation of their browser, while Microsoft acquired over 90% market share of the browser market by 2001. By this time, Microsoft was working on its own internal technologies and lost interest in developing an open web-based language standard. But the web and use of JavaScript continued to grow which led to the committee to reconvene and continue working on the next version of ECMAScript. But after a couple of years of work of a new, very ambitious version of JavaScript, a major split in the committee formed. Some of the members of the committee felt that the changes suggested were way too ambitious and would break a significant portion of the existing web. They favored a more gradual improvement of the language, which is backward compatible, with changes that do not require new syntax. This in fact resulted in the committee splitting up into groups, 
one of them working on an improvement of the older version 3 of ECMAScript, which was informally called version 3.1, and the other one continuing work on the new and updated version of the language ECMAScript 4. The inability of the ECMAScript 4 group to ultimately deliver a working specification in time led to the decision for version 4 to be abandoned and for version 3.1, which was now renamed ECMAScript 5, to be adopted as the next specification. ECMAScript 5 gave us important new features such as strict mode, getters and setters, improvements in security such as the ability to freeze objects. Even though abandoned after a decade of effort, not all work done on ECMAScript 4 was going to go to waste. Many of the features planned for this phase would in fact make it to the next version of the specification, ECMAScript 6. Work on ECMAScript 6 went a lot more smoothly with consensus of the committee. The new version of the specification was accepted in 2015. As with all things JavaScript, names abound. This version of the specification is commonly known as ECMAScript 6 or ES6 or alternatively as ECMAScript 2015. The new naming scheme of ECMAScript followed by the year of publication has in fact been adopted since, with all new versions following this format. ES6 was in fact a major update and it has turned JavaScript into a powerful general purpose programming language. It gave us block scope declarations with the let and the const keywords. It introduced classes for the first time in the language, as well as modules and arrow functions. Things such as promises, iterators, spread and rest operators, among many others. Since 2015, the committee has committed to an annual specification schedule. There is also a new approval process, which consists of five stages. Stage 0 consists of an initial idea, while stage 1 involves a formal proposal. Stage 2 involves an initial draft of the proposed change for the specification, while stage 3 should have a version that is almost final, ready for final feedback from the community. The last stage of the process is stage 4, which means that the proposal is ready to be included in the next version of the specification. We covered a lot of ground in this video. I think that apart from making an interesting story, I do feel that getting a feeling for how the language came to be in its present day state when you're trying to learn it is fairly important. The truth is that as you're learning the language you would frequently come across names such as JavaScript, ECMAScript, ES3, ES6 and those things do have to have meaning for you because they are important. There is a lot of legacy code out there. Many websites are written in the older ES3 format, while many websites would be written in the ES6 format. And I do feel that you have to be familiar with both, as you would undoubtedly come across examples that use one or the other.